Welcome again, uh, JR. Thank you, Chairman. For the record, JR Hall, former member of this committee, um, former state rep for eight years, testifying on behalf of the New Hampshire Firearms Coalition. Um, the written testimony that I turned in was for both bills, so I would just ask that the clerk put a copy in, in the folders for both. Um, we've heard a lot of emotions today. This is an emotional topic on both sides. But I think we all have a common goal, and the common goal is to make sure the children that are in the classroom are safe. Okay? Let's not lose sight of the goal while we're having a discussion about legislation and policy. Let's look at the people who are the first responders. Let's look at the psychologists and their observations of, of people who are killing. Let's look at the mass murders. Let's look at the FBI data. Let's look at the things that show us the results of failed policies from other states. The FBI reported in the last two years um, on some um, on the mass murders that took place. And I will I, I apologize, this is not in my written testimony. I was doing it in real time while I was here. But they published a report in the last two years um, on mass murders. And I wanna I wanna highlight something that was part of this. The murderers were all male. Each acted alone. The murderers ranged in age from 14 to 66. Seven were in their teens, 18 in their 20s, nine were in their 30s, nine were in their 40s, three were in their 50s, and four were in their 60s. Three of them wore body armor. Goes through a bunch of statistics. But 13 of them committed suicide at the end of this. When they ran into some resistance, they committed suicide. 11 were, were, were killed by law enforcement, and eight were, were stopped by citizens. The policy that we're talking about today, okay, takes that eight out of 11, right? Eight and 11 were, right, were, were not suicides, were either law enforcement or citizens. Almost 50% of those that were stopped by citizens all of a sudden, okay, aren't an option anymore in New Hampshire. Do we want to put in place a policy that makes it easier for someone to commit one of these heinous crimes? I would argue not. What we want to do is protect the kids. I was having a discussion with, with a law enforcement officer of one of the towns in New Hampshire. He is not the captain or the chief of the police, but he's relatively close. I said, you know, there's some simple things we can do that would make a much better impact. He goes, what? I said, police fill out a lot of paperwork, right? They pull people over, they gotta file reports. They go back to the police station, they spend time at a computer filing reports. Put their office in the schoolroom. That's a brilliant idea. It doesn't cost the taxpayers a dime. But that way, when the law enforcement officer is around, he's actually on site. I used to represent Bowen Dunbarton. Dunbarton, the police officer, the chief, can be there in roughly six seconds, okay? His office is 75 feet away from the front door. Bo, it's two miles down the street. But not every town in New Hampshire is like that. Um, I'll wrap up. My point is, we care about making sure the children are protected are protected. Let's not put a policy that others have said several times, it won't prevent murders, right? It done, the, the signs won't stop the criminals to create an emotional policy that actually puts our children in harm's way. With that, I'll ask you my testimony. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hall. Are there any questions of the presenter? Uh, Representative Shaw. Yes. I, I, I just, I, we're not supposed to make comments, yes. but I have to on that point about a police officer doing reports within the school. That is an absolutely amazing idea and I've never heard it before. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, next up is uh, Vicki Hopkins, please.